Uh, so over here we have MDMA, and over here we have methamphetamine. And we're gonna be looking at how these actually interact with different proteins in your body. And uh, yeah, joining us, we have Asher Brandt uh, as a guest on uh, psychedelics that he's been doing his PhD on, um, as well as our application science team here from Nanum. Asher, Mike, Carla, John, uh, how about we kick into uh, the science and actually look at how some of these molecules bind with the receptors in our brain? Both um, methamphetamine and MDMA are uh, phenylethylamine um, backbone compounds. So if you overlay them, you can you can see that the phenyl rings right can be superimposed, and the methylamine groups also superimposed roughly. Um, <laughs> and then I guess the main difference is this methylene dioxy group on MDMA, hence the name. And so the difference in pharmacology must be driven just by this little group right here. Basically, the way these compounds work is they both bind to uh, transporter proteins. So normally you have a serotonin transporter protein, which pulls serotonin from the synaptic uh, cleft to the axon terminal. Um, but when something like um, an amphetamine gets in your body, like meth or um, MDMA, uh, meth or MDMA will bind to the transporter protein, which will pull um, those molecules from the synaptic cleft to the uh, tr to the um, axon terminals. And this um, also, once the uh, methamphetamine and um, MDMA is in the synaptic cleft, um, it prevents VMAT, which is a protein that packs monoamine transporters into their vesicles. It prevents this from happening. So you have a buildup of monoamines in the synaptic cleft, and then the transporter protein dumps a bunch of serotonin back into the um, the synapse, which has which produces a much higher concentration in the synapse, which will induce the likelihood of binding. We have a norepinephrine transporter. This is actually from a uh, fruit fly model because there aren't a lot of good crystal structures of uh, membrane proteins uh, overall, but apparently we're able to do some good with uh, fruit flies here. And what we're looking at right here is where we've already have a number of ligands that have been known to bind that uh, either drugs as well as norepinephrine itself in the transporter protein as it's being put back into the cellular region below. So you can see in dark green is we have a ligand already bound into this norepinephrine pocket. And this is a, an inhibitor of the norepinephrine transporter that isn't uh, <laughs> an amphetamine or MDMA, as you can see but it has some of the similar features that we're looking at. So if we blow this up a little bit, it should be a little easier for us to see the different interactions and how this is supposed to fit in to this pocket here. And it's very similar to how norepinephrine would bind into this area. So we can see pretty clearly uh, with the labels and everything um, where we are in the uh, transporter protein and looking at these different interactions. So this is first just looking at MDMA which is a, a capable binder of this transporter protein. And in fact, this is actually the transporter protein it has the highest affinity for. The best pose that we were able to create utilizing our docking protocol. And you can see a lot of the overlapping of this region compared to the norepinephrine that's been crystallized right into the pocket. And you're able to see really well how this dioxane uh, ring there, right over here, is really filling out some space uh, differently than the norepinephrine. John, none of those uh, 25 dock positions had a, a flipped configuration already? Um, out of the, the top grouping that was, most of these are not very high uh, sort of values that we would consider for docking. Uh, out of the 25, a few of them did flip somewhat. However, the uh, placement within the pocket was a bit further away from the norepinephrine. Uh, they were much more into this side over here, but we can definitely just go through frame by frame and take a look at a few of these other uh, let's frames. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So we can see all that. All That's right. Nice. <laughs> cool. And then let's go ahead and just play through. Mike, let me know if there's any good ones you want me to stop at. Oh, let's, can I we slow it down one. a little? Yeah, there were a couple. Yeah, it's really yeah. fast. But there were a couple that definitely did that. Yeah, for sure. And then I think there was one earlier too. Yeah, I did see an aspartic acid right up here. 
Yeah, exactly. Say, gonna... You probably have a salt bridge. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just thought it was probably likely that the, the methylene dioxy might be mimicking mm. the two hydroxies of norepinephrine in the way it fits. But I agree with what Asher said that uh, for a lot of these monoamines, really this amine is going to pick up a strong interaction with an aspartic acid or a glutamic acid yeah. so um, right in a here. pocket of a receptor or a mm. transporter. And we've got an aspartic acid right up here. And my guess is that this distance is about right. I, I guess one yeah, of the, the cool. big parts of this, this paper, if I recall correctly, was talking about how meth binds uh, more to that uh, <laughs> norepinephrine. Sorry, yeah, norepinephrine receptor more so than um, MDMA does, and then MDMA binds uh, also to a few other receptors more so as well. Yeah, well, there's a, if you yeah. go ahead. If you look at the affinity wise. Um, MDMA binds to norepinephrine about 1.12 uh, micromolar and at serotonin at about 2 nanomolar, 2.5 nanomolar. But then MDMA shows really high selectivity towards norepinephrine, mm. which I think is interesting. It's like 0 0.11 uh, micromolar. And then at yeah. serotonin, it's like 33 uh, micromolar. So it's really interesting how it has that high selectivity at norepinephrine versus MDMA doesn't overall i'd say slight but not really yeah if you're interested we can also look at meth inside the same pocket as well as i i docked both of them so we could try to we should little... i think i think what would be sweet is um mm. we should see if our experimental glide scores kind of uh give rise to the actual ones because you should see tighter binding with meth if this is the norepinephrine yeah. right so we should see a more negative number if it's right what is this the one... um numerically what's the best glide score value do you know what it is that's about a six, a six right? it's not phenomenal okay um this is about a, a 5.3 not a 4.7 so this is still in the the top you know you know uh half easily but uh we can take a a few more looks at some of these poses I think you did have the same stereochemistry for meth and MDMA, which was S, which actually turns out to be apparently the more active one. Good. And it would affect the binding too. Oh, so we put the wrong one, is what you're saying, Carla, when we no, built no, it we, the it second time? Oh, okay, it's okay. It was the I think right it's one. The S. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I know that this is supposed to be able to do so, but at the same time, without having these uh, other, you know, groups coming off of the benzene ring there it appears that there maybe it's more the fact of it being able to enter the transporter more easily so sometimes it's not merely especially when looking at ic50 values it's not always a you know the the bound state that's the most impressive but its ability to set up a bound state is sometimes um which we can miss sometimes in a docking uh simple mm. experiment I'm going to overlay the MDMA very briefly. I feel like we've uh, looked at this quite a bit. Might want to look at the serotonin. Um, but this is sort of how all three look in there at the moment. And I think it's clear that, yeah, these these rings all line up in a pretty similar area. And, and really, it, like Asher was already saying, it this amine group might be the uh, real sort of like anchor point. Um, what was the score for MDMA? Uh, MDMA, let's take a look because I don't remember exactly what their top the top score. So the top score was closer to a seven, um, negative six point yeah, nine. But uh, I think it has a lot it. to do with the size of the you know the dioxane. Um, do we want to move on to the serotonin transporter? Yeah, real let's fast move on. Then? Then. Yeah, let's yeah. go to serotonin for sure. Sounds good. Yeah. So this is uh, the serotonin transporter. Uh, this is actually the structure that uh, Mike suggested, and it has a, an inhibitor in there. Yeah, so this is paroxetine, not serotonin, um, right here in the receptor. So is that an SSRI? Yes. Yep. Interesting. Mm. And it's interesting, you've got a methylene dioxy on it, too. You almost think How MDMA that... could overlay that perfectly, the dioxane ring. At least up in there, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. The amine I didn't notice that would be close. I mean, we can take a we can take a quick look at the dock structures in the serotonin yeah. uh, transporter if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, interesting. 
Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Oh yeah, yeah, look at the dioxin. Look at that. That's so cool. Look, Perfect. Look at yeah. Looks like That's somebody so cool. knows what he's talking about over here. No. <laughs> oh wow. Oh yeah. In the dioxin Actually, ring, me, it lines up perfect. That's so great. Make this a little bigger and oriented a yeah. little bit more so. Yeah, also, easy. the camera doesn't have a floor, so it doesn't matter if we partially go through. Oh, the floor. it doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then I I will be less worried about it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah the... That's why. Yeah, yeah. So the dioxane rings between our co-crystallized ligands and MDMA line up perfectly. That's sweet. That's awesome. But and if you guys also notice, the nitrogen, I believe, is a one carbon difference, right? But it also I think it's one like carbon it's difference. Exactly. It's pretty close yeah. to the aspartic acid down here still, though. So, so you think it's still, uh, has it still has the salt bridge, like even though docking. it's one... I what was I the would other measure one interacting this. with the alanine instead, or is it? Uh, it might be also I, I would measure them might both. Might be the see. backbone of the alanine. That's fair. Could be, yeah. That's really but cool. I do though. think I find uh, that awesome. A lot of the stabilization also probably comes from up here. You can see this uh, additional ring um, for the peroxetine really has a lot of effect, probably within this area with both the phenylalanine. That you can see it might have sort of that perpendicular the, relationship yeah. with and oh, with the halogen and be, possible halogen bonding with the three and above it. So, or the this glutamic acid. I mean, yeah, I'm sure that was pie stack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks, I mean, whenever I see a halogen, I'm like, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when those come out, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. But this is, this is unsurprisingly the top docked uh, structure out of all the it's frames beautiful. and it has yeah the dioxane but let's take a quick look and see what how the, the meth did without this is about a 6.5 which okay. obviously it's a not a perfect measurement or anything it's not the 5.1 that's uh said there were you but saying uh me... pi pi stacking with the 335 oh yeah or with the 341 it, it be, yeah. or probably both honestly yeah i was seeing the perpendicular but you're right he's they've got a, a really Honestly, it, there, considering how there, it can rotate there. there, who knows? It could have something with both or one, depending on the situation. Yeah. It's probably stabilized by both if you were to do MD. Well, you were done MD. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. Thanks, everybody, <laughs> for joining us. Uh, we have these lovely uh, norepinephrine and serotonin transporters here, as well as some interesting chemicals, including MDMA and methamphetamine. Um, you know, these are very, very interesting to research. So if you're a researcher yourself looking into um, the effects that these have on the body um, and you want to see them interacting with proteins like we have here, uh, download Nanome, you know, get a virtual reality headset and you could join us like Asher is today. So, you know, thanks everybody on the team and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Asher. Bye-bye. Yeah.